everyone. I'm Pastor Keenan Roberts, the senior pastor at New Destiny Christian Center in Thornton, Colorado, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Stories of Destiny, a feature here on our website that uh, tells amazing testimonies, amazing stories of what God has done in the lives of people that are a part of our New Destiny Christian Center church family. And uh, I am just so happy today to be able to have Drew and Jane Williamson as uh, our special guests. So thank you both so much for coming today. And uh, we're going to talk about just, um, it's really even more than one testimony. There are, there are multiple testimonies that are woven into this story that we are gonna talk about uh, today. But in general, how are the two of you doing? How are things going for you lately? Everything's pretty well right now. Can't complain. Everything's good. Doing good. Good. And uh, you guys are a wonderful part of our of our New Destiny family and uh, always involved in so many different things here at church, enthusiastically involved in all kinds of things. And Drew, you uh, are a wonderful uh, Bible teacher for us in the adult Bible class, which we love and appreciate uh, so much. So... Today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into just a really beautiful story that happened uh, a number of years ago, and uh, you guys have uh, a daughter, uh, Lisa, and uh, I've known her for many years, and she is married. She and her husband Jonathan are also a wonderful part of our church family, and uh, God did something wonderful in in her and in you guys. Uh, when when she was when she was a little girl, and we're gonna we have some cool things to tell about how that happened. And as we get started, um, a number of years ago, the Seven Hundred Club did a piece on this testimony. And um, tell me how the Seven Hundred Club part of this came about. Did you guys get in touch with them or did they hear about it somehow? Well, they they put out over the air that they wanted uh, some testimonies that was a little different than just going forward. Not that there's anything wrong with that, coming forward to the church altar and accepting Christ. So we're looking for unusual testimonies. So I thought about that. I wasn't involved in a lot of ministry at that particular time, so I took the time to write out a very lengthy letter. And several weeks later, I heard from him. And then from that point on, they came out to, uh, flew to Denver. We were gonna do a couple more here in the Denver area. And uh, they came right to the house. And then we went to uh, the old children's hospital here in Denver. But they also wanted somebody who looked like me, and by the way, the guy in the video playing me was this guy right here. We both changed a little bit. <laughs> yes, both we got have. better looking. And... <laughs> so anyway, that's how we got in touch, and we done it at, in our home, uh, and we also done it down at the Children's Hospital, same hospital that uh, our daughter was healed in. Okay, and so that that the 700 club part of retelling this and the reenactment all of that that happened in 1998 correct, correct. the testimony was long <laughs> the, the actual uh miracle and miracles were long before that but yeah. but the reenactment was in 1998 when you guys sat down with them so why don't we i think this is the perfect time to, well th this is this is a miracle healing testimony right what else would you say that, and, and what we're about to watch, we're going to see that 700 Club piece here in just a minute, but it's, it's a healing testimony. What else is it, this whole story? Well, I would also say that I had a mental knowledge of Christ, and I kind of wanted Him for fire insurance in my life. <laughs> and I'd even prayed the prayer a few times, and... Uh, but I really didn't want to deal with the sin issue. So the first thing the Lord ever spoke to me was repent. And that was a game changer for me. It 
it wasn't the ultimate thing, but it was a real game changer because I, I really needed to change so the there, So there's a healing part of this, physical healing, miracle. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, 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 a real salvation experience in your life that mm -hmm. became very much alive and personal. And then, Jane, I think you said earlier too that uh, there's a... <laughs> There, there was a work in your marriage that God did. At the time, our marriage wasn't really good. We, we were fighting constantly. And uh, if anything had happened to my daughter, we were planning on meeting each other. And I think God really knew that and put everything together because it would have been just really bad. None of us would have never came to the Lord or none of us would have known God's grace and you know, love for us if he hadn't healed my daughter. Because... Uh, like I said, our marriage was on the rocks, mm. and God put it back together through my baby. So there's several, there's several layers of things that are all tied together in this wonderful story. And uh, let's watch right now, let's watch the 700 Club piece on this from several years ago. Hope you enjoy this. Our next story has to be one of a parent's worst nightmares. Imagine your child becomes ill. So you go to the doctor and do what he tells you. The only problem is his prescribed cure puts your child on the verge of death with no hope for recovery. Well, what would you do? Well, for Drew and Jane Williamson, there was only one answer. Here it is. 20 years ago, Drew and Jane Williamson were on their way home from vacation when their five-year-old daughter, Lisa, became seriously ill. By this time, her eyes are... Uh sinking in the back of her head and she's screaming and the screams were just absolutely terrifying. When you have a child that's screaming and yelling in front of you and trying to bite you and yelling she can't see and you know not even rational it really does more than frighten you. I mean you're on the verge of you don't know what to do. Lisa had developed a fever after a minor cut had become infected so doctors prescribed large amounts of aspirin to fight that fever. But when Lisa's body went into seizures, her parents knew something was drastically wrong. By the time they got her to Children's Hospital in Denver, she had slipped into a coma. Initially, doctors had no idea what was going on inside of her body, and it would be several more hours before Drew and Jane would learn anything. So he said, well, let me, let me lay it to you straight. We don't expect her to make it through the night. She has a disease called Rye's Syndrome, and even if she does make it through this, you're looking at very serious complications, brain damage, liver damage and a host of other complications. Jane had known God as a young girl, but had long since turned her back on him. I wanted God in my life, but I thought because of being backslidden and everything that he wouldn't, you know, answer me or be with me because I thought I had rejected him. But the good news was, uh, in spite of the fact I didn't know God, I wanted to find out who he was and if he could help me because at this point I was willing to do anything that doctor or God or anybody would ask me to do if I felt like it was going to help her. But God seemed as far away as the moon, and no matter what they prayed, nothing seemed to help. First night we came back home, we came home to get some stuff, and I had gone into my daughter's room, and we hadn't unpacked from the trip. And I was sitting on the end of the bed, and I had one of her stuffed animals, and I started to cry. And I just called out to God, I said, you know, I know that I haven't been with you and everything, but uh, please, you know, bring my daughter back, I'll do anything. I was really desperate. Night after night, Lisa's condition remained the same. Drew and Jane kept going to the little chapel there at the hospital to pray. It had become routine, but there was nothing else they could do. Then one night, God met Drew in a most dramatic way. When I went up to that altar, uh, when my knee hit the carpet, as I bowed at that altar, I heard a voice that was, I can't honestly say it was audible, but I'm saying it was crystal clear. And it was one word, and it was repent. I had no clue what repentance even meant at that particular time. But I knew exactly what to do. All I felt was the presence of the Lord, and I, and I also felt a change of heart. Uh, then I began to think, well, gee, this seems like a real convenient time to, to ask God to heal our daughter. And instead of saying, well, Lord, why me? And uh, please don't take her and all of these type of things. What I did was I said, But I said, Lord, I said, here she is. I said, I'm giving her back to you because it was very difficult. 
I was giving away the most precious thing that I had. But while Drew knelt there at the altar, weeping over his daughter, God spoke one more time. That's when God said, I'm going to give her back. I'm going to heal your daughter. When he looked at me, I saw the glory of God all over him, and I knew that God was beginning to move in our, in our lives and in my daughter's life. That morning, as Drew and Jane made their way through the hospital, they knew something was going to happen. And sure enough, here come this doctor. He's just running up the hall, and he's screaming. And he said, uh, she's going to make it. She's going to make it. And uh, what he did was he explained to us, he said they were giving her a sponge bath, and she responded to it just a little bit. Now, we've tried to talk with her, but uh, she didn't respond to our voice. Jane, she tries to uh, uh, speak to the daughter, and there was no response. So at that moment, uh, I took over, and, and I, uh, I think I called her name. And instantly, she raised up, opened up her eyes, and raised up into our arms. And I'm telling you, there was not a dry eye in that room. It's been more than 20 years since God healed Lisa. But not a day goes by that Drew and Jane don't think about God's miraculous touch in their own lives. Every day, we look at our daughter and we know what God's grace did and his mercy and his love for us. And you can't walk away from that when you see someone walking around that, you know, was on death door. It's given us God in the center of our lives. What do you do? You take it to the Lord. But isn't it interesting where he starts with the tragedy? He doesn't necessarily start with the sick person. He starts with you. You come to God. He first wants to get you right because when you have an answer to prayer and you haven't repented, then you'll figure everything in your life is okay because you just got something good from God, so he must be pleased with you. So first God says, wait, wait, I want you to get right. That's why it takes some time a little longer, you know, on prayer. You have to get right. You have to say yes. And when you say yes, then God says yes. And that's what happened there with Drew. Wow, that uh, is remarkable to be able to go back and see that uh, all these years later. And I hope that you enjoyed it, seeing it with, with really a, a, a retelling, even in the actual place, the actual hospital, where this miracle took place uh, so many years ago, even back in the, 19, in the 1970s. So for the two of you, here we are, all these years later and um, I, I really I want us to visit some of where you're at today and what it means to you all these years later with what God did it, it changed your life right I mean, it, cha it changed your marriage changed you guys spiritually uh, the makeup of your family was kept intact because God healed your daughter uh, Drew, I know that, that you've told me before about a place that you reached in your own life when this was going on in Lisa's physical body when she was doing so bad and you weren't sure where she, you didn't know what was going to happen. And the marriage, your marriage was in experiencing such turmoil that, that as, you, as you were talking to God about this, what, what did you tell him? As you, as you kind of presented her before him, laid her before the Lord? Well, I didn't know hardly anything about Scripture in those days, but it's funny. I did pray pretty biblically there, starting with repentance. But the real key uh, to where I, I lay her out to the Lord, kind of like Abraham did to Isaac, his one and only son. This is the only daughter. Was right? this when you were in the chapel? Or yes. Was it, this was when you were in the hospital chapel. Okay. And anyway, uh, after I got done praying about why me, Lord, and all these goofy things that wasn't at all spiritual, it was strictly selfish, I got real with God and I said, Lord, it would just be better because of all the problems in our lives come from an alcoholic background and so on. Honestly, we didn't know any biblical principles on how to uh, raise a family and so on and so forth. And, uh, I was just in turmoil and, and, and I realized that I didn't want my daughter to go through what I went through. So 
So I just simply laid her out and said, Lord, it would be better if you take her home rather than to leave her here and suffer with us. Mm -hmm. And that's when the Lord spoke. And he said, I'm going to give your daughter back. Wow. So, right so, so you reached this... Uh, go ahead, say what you were going to say. It was the what? Greatest moment of my life. That sure. was the game changer. If I have to look back on anything in my life, it was when God said, I'm going to heal her and give her back. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's amazing. It really is. It's still amazing all these years later and just hearing you talk about it right now, you know, gives me chills and in, in considering that this was, this was the power of God in action. This was the love of God in action. And this was the voice of God, <laughs> right? You know, speaking voice I heard to you. Sure. Um, what was it like, Drew, to get to that place where you said, if you, if you have to take her, Lord, take her? How did you reach that place? I mean, that, that's, that's an incredible place to get to. God, if this is what is, I mean, you're saying that if this is what's best for her, right? I got my eyes off of myself and I put it on family needs. Because up to that point, it was strictly, it was all about Drew and how he's going to come out of this. Because I could perceive our daughter dying and her going back to New York State. We just moved here to Denver. Talking about Jane. Yes. Mm -hmm about a year previous to this event. So, yes, this was uh, the greatest moment of my life. And, but it was simply just laying myself out and committing everything to Him. I've never done that before. Because most everything in my life was it's about Drew. Yeah. And that's when the Lord changes your heart and puts your focus on greater and higher things. Yeah, sure. Um, Jane, what were you what were you feeling and experiencing during some of what he was going through? Was were you in a similar place, or what was happening in your heart and life? Well, yes and no. Um, <clears throat> I believed in God, but I didn't really think He was a healer then. You know, as far as doing you know answering prayers, because mm -hmm. uh, I had prayed many times as a child, growing up, losing my parents and everything, and never got an answer from God. So I knew that something was happening in his life because I could see it, but yet myself, I was kind of in limbo because I, I really didn't feel that God was going to do anything for me as far as, you know, my daughter being healed or our marriage because I thought, well, if she's healed, if we're going to go on with a terrible marriage and we're going to end up in divorce anyway. So I really didn't believe that God was real enough to care that much about us yeah. as far as, you know, mm. doing something. And you saw that he and I saw really that he does did. care about I you. I saw that he did, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, God really loves people and he can he can do so much more mm -hmm. than just the healing. You know, he can really bring a marriage together, he can bring people back together, he can show his grace and love. And all the years that he didn't answer me, he answered me then. Yeah. You know, when I really needed it. Mm -hmm. He's able to do exceedingly above that which we ask or even think. That's what he did. Yeah, <laughs> yes he did. Yes he did. If someone may have somehow missed it or or skipped ahead in the video by chance, uh, for anyone watching, just refresh them on on what Lisa was dealing with physically and and what she was healed of. Well, help me out here a little bit, but. She had, uh, she'd come, while well, we were on vacation, we went to Salt Lake City, and, and when we got to Salt Lake City, Memorial Day weekend, by the way, which is the weekend we're doing this right now, so she'd come down, well, she had some kind of an infection previous to that. In her foot and her cut. Yeah. And anyway, now uh, we arrive in Salt Lake City on vacation, and uh, she's starting to get very sick. We didn't know what it was. And anyway, then they told us, we were at the Children's Hospital there in uh, Salt Lake City. 
So we're coming back. They told us to come back quickly, get her back here to the hospital. And we stopped in at Rock Springs, Wyoming, and because she was starting to go out of her mind there. And she, her eyes would roll in the back of her head. And she was five years old at the time, and here, here I am, well over 200 pounds. I got my arms wrapped around it. It was all I could do to hold her. She had such mm -hmm. supernatural strength. Mm -hmm. and just acting completely delirious and anyway uh, we got her back here to the children's hospital and anyway uh, it didn't, really didn't look like she was going to make it through the first night and, and that's what the doctors told us we would doubt she was going to make it through the first night because there was what 500 of them uh, in that year of Rye syndrome uh, cases she was the only one to survive in Colorado. Wow. And anyway, that was pretty remarkable, but it, it was... It there were 500 cases in Colorado? Yes. Yeah. And she was the only one to survive? Only survivor in this state. They said most of them didn't make it. Uh, hers was caused from aspirin. She had rice syndrome caused from 12 aspirin a day they gave her. Mm. It's full of adult aspirin. Now they don't give kids aspirin. Uh, Not adult. It happened. Her, her whole body was shutting down, her liver, her kidneys, and everything. And the brain was swollen, and what it did, it, it made all kinds of complications in, in the body. And most of the young people that had it didn't make it because the heart would stop, or the liver, or it's, you know, something really bad, and they couldn't get it going again. Okay. And they told us that she wouldn't make it. When we put her in the hospital there, uh, the doctor came out within a half an hour and said she won't make it through the night. Mm -hmm. But she yeah. did. Yeah. But she did, and so while, you know, there are things that God is doing in this little girl as well. Oh, yes. Right? And um, so while you're praying, you know, you're, there's the wonderful reenactment of you being in the chapel. Um, and, and so, while you're praying there, what is it that she's experiencing? What is it? Uh, I think what you're referring to is when I am. That's she. Yeah. When she started, well, uh, the night that that I prayed, where I broke through to God and He told me to repent, and then He gave me the promise after I laid her out before her. And, and by the way, I find it amazing that you didn't even know what the word repent meant. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> but I knew what to do. I knew how to make some changes. When yeah, God gives God. you some direction, He gives you yeah, supernatural right. direction. <laughs> it's amazing. So anyway, uh, after He said He, he was going to heal her, and I walked over and told Jane, here it is around roughly 2 o'clock in the morning, and I told her I stood and tears were rolling down my eyes and she knew that I'd made contact with the Lord. And anyway, I said, it's going to be okay. God said he's going to heal her. And you know, I didn't have to enforce that. She could see that it was real. What did you feel in that moment? A peace that I've never had before. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't worried about her dying. I wasn't worried about our marriage or anything. I was just, I had total peace on everything. It was something that I can't explain, but it's something where when you know was, something's going to happen. It was the peace that passes, exactly. that passes all. Understand. Uh -huh. <laughs> understand it. That's exactly, because when we left that hospital, uh, right after I told her that, it was <laughs> roughly two o'clock in the morning, and we used to go home the previous nights while she was in this coma, and we couldn't hardly sleep. We'd get a little bit, but most of it was just tied up in the knots. It's all going to come to an end. Well, this night we went home, and we first of all, before we left the hospital, we were just laughing hilariously leaving there because of the peace. Wow. Well, how do you do that when your daughter's still in the, uh, the in a coma in <laughs> intensive care? How can you laugh? Well, it was just, everything was released, and I knew it was, I didn't know when he was going to heal her, I didn't know how. That wasn't my concern. All I know is I had a piece of God, he's going to take care of it. So we went home, took our time going home, and we went home and we slept like babies, because mm -hmm. we hadn't had any good sleep 
in some time and we slept in a little bit. I had a feeling it was going to be the next morning. And uh, we got up, we ate a big breakfast, something else we hadn't already been doing was eating. Didn't want to, didn't sure. feel like eating. Sure. And anyway, we took our time going to the hospital. And as I'm going to the hospital, I'm admiring. Here it was right at the first of June, it's like it is right now. And I could see the, the Rocky Mountains with all the snow on and everything was greening up. The tulips were blooming and all of that sort of stuff. And it was one of the, maybe the only time in my life that I really admired God's nature. And anyway, we had a feeling it was going to be this morning. Uh, and sure enough, as soon as we exited the elevator, two doctors were just screaming, running down the hall, who, who was pretty much in charge of her, and said, she's going to make it, she's going to make it. So we go running down to her room. And, and of course, I could run in those days, and we were all sprinting. Jane got left behind, but we were sprinting. <laughs> People were moving out of our way, these three big guys coming down the hallway. Anyway, <coughs> we went into her uh, intensive care, and the room was just loaded with doctors, technicians, and so on, and monitoring their heart and all these things, tubes down their throat, and all of those sort of things. And she, she was still in that coma, but they, they assured us that she had responded to the, uh, the sponge bath they were giving her at that time. And they said, well, we, she won't respond to our voice, but she, I believe she'll respond to your voice. So as I, uh, Jane spoke first, and uh, nothing happened. I don't know, you said her name two or three times, and nothing happened. They said, well, Drew, why don't you get up there and talk to her? So I don't remember exactly how many times I spoke to her, but it seemed like it was the third time. Kind of reminds me of the story of Lazarus. Sure. Uh, come forth. Well, anyway, uh, I spoke to her on the third time, and all of a sudden her eyes come open, and she raised up into our arms. Wow. <laughs> You'll never forget it. You'll That's right. But later at that, uh, as, uh, well, after she got out of the hospital, she was pretty young then. She told us that um, the moment that I spoke to her, she was in the arms of Jesus. She yeah. really didn't want to come back. Yeah. Right. Heaven's a great place. <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs> she she uh, has experienced him in a pretty amazing way. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. But but he did he did send her back he did right and um, we're eternally grateful yeah it really is uh, it really is a remarkable story I'm sure the joy uh, I mean you're you're remembering even today what the joy was in your heart right when her eyes opened and you embraced her mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the day that we brought her home from the hospital, we were living in a small apartment in Inglewood at that time. And it was a, a nice, warm, early June day. Anyway, all we did was, when we got in, we, we locked the doors, turned on the air conditioner, and for several hours, that's all we did was run and hug each other. Sure. Well, and you were, things were hanging in the balance. You were experiencing so many emotions of, of wondering if, if she might no longer be a part of your life, right? To be able right. to then just embrace her and hold her and to be so thankful for the miracle of God. You, you, see you knew it was God. That's correct. You no knew God did. Absolutely oh, no yes. question about it. So, and, and I still, I'm still living off of that joy. <laughs> you bet. And, and when you see the power of God move like that, it has to have an effect in your life. Yes. Yes. And, and I believe all these years later is also a part of this incredible story. 
right, of who you guys are in the Lord, serving God, she and her husband serving God, um, and, and God spoke to you to repent, you did, turned your life over to him entirely, your marriage became his, it was a wonderful thing that God did there as well. Um, as you, I mean, just just telling this today, even, I mean, what, either one of you, what, what does it mean to you today to, to think back on this and to tell it and, and to know what God did specifically and personally for the three of you? Well, for me, it just, whenever I think about it, and I try to thank God every single day, every single day for what He did that night in the hospital, but it just continuously reminds me of the reality of God and His power to change and what He can do in your marriage, what He can do in your life. You don't have to have your child dying. You don't even have to be in any kind of a bad fix. And if your life is just empty and nothing in it, God can fill it. He filled our lives not only with the joy of the Lord, but the power of God. And we, we've tasted and we see that the right. Lord is good. Right. You know, living in, a, living in a city like Denver, we have a lot of... Uh, you know, we have a lot of first-rate, top-notch news stations that are that are here in the in the Denver area. And whenever there is, whenever there's a big news story, um, they they always want an eyewitness account. They they want to talk to the eyewitnesses, right? And just listening to you guys tell this today, I'm thinking about the fact that that. If someone today, maybe even somebody watching this video, is questioning whether God is real, God, God, are you really there? It, it is 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 everything that the Bible says about you, Jesus? Is it true? You are eyewitnesses. You have a firsthand account. No, no one can discount your experience, right? No, nobody can take that away from you. It is what you experienced. Correct. You were an eyewitness account to an incredible miracle on multiple levels. Right? What if somebody today is wondering if God is real or not? If God cares, if God sees them, if God knows their situation, if He even exists, what would, what would you say to them today based on your experience? Well, I would say God is no respecter of people. I'm no better than anybody out there. What He done for us, He can do for you, and even greater things than that. So, we're not the only ones. There's many other people who's experienced some similar things in their lives. You can experience it too. Yeah. Because God loves you just as much as he loved us. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for 20 years or if you're not a Christian or if you don't have a relationship with him. God, God can move and do what he does to draw people to him, maybe even to change somebody's marriage. Jane, what if somebody today is going through something in their marriage, right? And they're trying to figure out if God cares about their marriage. If what what, what would you what would you say to them if they're going through a hard time and and trying to figure out if God can make a difference in their relationship? Well, to me, God loved marriage, and He don't want it to break up. And I think that God wants to help every marriage to be happy, to be grounded in Him. And I think it hurts God when our marriages are in turmoil. It really makes him cry, it breaks his heart to see that. And I think, you know, like with me, I didn't call on God with my marriage because I figured, well, this happens to everybody. And there's no God that's going to help me 
and you know, put my marriage bed together. But I would tell people that there is hope. Don't ever, ever give up on Christ. Because God can come and he can change your husband's life, your life, your hearts. He can put a marriage together that was shambled and broken and overnight. He can cause love to come back in there where there was no love. Which is what he did And that's you. what he did with us. He brought it, because I didn't even care for Drew anymore. And the hurt and the pain was too bad. And a lot of people say, well, I could never fix this marriage. No, there always is hope. And God can take that love and put it back in there and that spark can build it up again and set it on fire. And that's all you have to do is ask. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do is tell him you want it to work. And he can do it the rest. This is pretty remarkable just considering all of, all of what God has done uh, and, and all these years later you guys are still giving God the glory for it, right? And, and remembering and inspiring other people, right? Of, of what God, of what God can do. I know that you guys have told many people this story personally over the years and it's been an encouragement to them. I'm sure people are incredibly encouraged hearing you, hearing you talk about it, uh, hearing you talk about it today. Um, Drew, what if somebody's watching right now and and they're they've got a they've got some kind of situation that just looks like a God, if you don't intervene, what am I going to do? Right? Maybe maybe it's a, a, a physical illness thing or something going on with a child or maybe even something financially or some other situation. Um, based on on what God did in you and the miracle that you guys experienced in Lisa's life and in your own lives, how would you encourage them today if they feel like if they feel like they're just at maybe a dead end? Well, as I said earlier, God is no respecter of persons. And what He's done for us, He can do for you as well. So, if you, there's no difference, go back briefly to where I was at, didn't know God at the time that I cried out when He healed her. If you cry out to the Lord, there's a promise that if you seek me, you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to do that and humble yourself, you will find Him. That's an absolute promise in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I like that. And whoever whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, and there's saving that He does in many ways. Right? Mm -hmm. Your story the Savior did some saving of your marriage. <laughs> you called on the name of the Lord and He saved your daughter. Called on the name of the Lord, He saved you guys spiritually, redeemed you and physically. washed you. Physically, this saving, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful story. I, I want to thank you guys for um, taking the time to tell this tell this story. It, it really is an amazing story of destiny. And um, I, like to, I like to define the word destiny as the God plan. You know, God has a plan. And, and, and as we experience Him, really, that's how we find and realize our greatest destiny in life. What God has for us, what God wants for us. And for you guys, this this Story is a huge part of the God plan. It's who we are for your life, and no one can ever take that from That's you. That's right. <laughs> no one can ever take it from you. I want us to uh, close in prayer uh, today. I thank you so much for coming, and I just want to pray God's encouragement for anyone that may be watching today uh, this video that needs it. All right, let's pray together. Lord, today I just want to thank you for Drew and Jane. I want to thank you for Lisa. I thank you for her husband, Jonathan. I thank you, Lord, for this amazing testimony, this remarkable story, um, this, this firsthand account from Drew and Jane today. 
and, and what you did. And Lord, we just give you glory. We thank you for it. And God, for anyone watching today that may be, they're, they're at some kind of crossroads, maybe it's spiritually, or, or, or they're, maybe they're feeling bankrupt in some way. They're going through something hard. It may be a, a physical challenge, some kind of mountain in their path, and they're just not sure what to do. I pray, Lord, that they would call out to you. I pray that they would put their complete trust in you, O oh God. I pray that they would be someone that, that seeks you with their whole heart and, and pursues you with everything within them. And, and may they be encouraged in you, God. May they see your hand at work. And, and Lord, if, if things don't begin to, to, to move one way or the other immediately, I pray that they would continue to hold on to you. And may they hold on to your promises and hold on to the truth of your word, knowing that you love them and that you care about them deeply, even as Jane said earlier, trying to figure out, not even knowing if you really cared about her or about them personally. Lord, may, may anyone watching today know that you do. May they know that you do and may, if they need to, Lord, may they confess their sins and put their faith and trust in you, Lord Jesus, making you their personal Savior. Lord, we pray these things today. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to thank both of you so much for uh, coming and, and, and telling this remarkable story again today. May the telling of this story never end. Amen. <laughs> Under the glory of God, right? Amen. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us for another edition of Stories of Destiny. God bless you. I hope that you'll enjoy some other videos here on our site as well. Thanks a lot.